the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage. 
and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters, brothers, that we might worthily offer the sacred mysteries. We prepare as we always do by acknowledging our need for God's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you are our rock and our redemption. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the hope of your people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our refuge in the storm. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever, and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm is Lord in your great love, answer me. Lord in your great love, answer me. Lord in your great love, answer me. sake I bear insult and shame covers my face I have become an outcast to my brothers 
a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, and the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. 
what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, or good day, whenever you might be tuning in. It's kind of a special weekend on a number of counts. Of course, Friday, we entered into the green zone, and we're gradually, you know, things are kind of easing up. Now you can go out and get something to eat, uh, be able to get your hair cut, get your nails done, whatever, all those important things. Huh? And of course, I think today is the first full day of summer, which is always kind of a, kind of a new beginning for some people, a new season. And of course here, even though you might be watching this on your phone or on whatever, we were able to welcome real live people into our church building. We had mass yesterday at five and then this morning at eight. In case you're interested, yesterday about, oh, about 55 people came and celebrated the Eucharist. And then at eight o'clock we had almost 80. It was kind of different though, you know? As I said to folks earlier, after the very first mass on a Tuesday evening at 5.15, uh, some people, uh, when I talked to them a little bit about it, the sentiment wasn't that, wow, oh, it's so great to be back, you know. That's what I was kind of expecting. But yet people were kind of of one mind, not everybody, but a couple of people said, well, that was certainly different, or that was certainly unusual. Of course, you probably know what they mean. I mean, first of all, you're where you are right now. Maybe having a little cup of coffee, or maybe doing the breakfast dishes during the homily, believe it or not. But you're watching Mass, and you have been doing that, and I know many people say that they really do pray when they're tuning in uh, through technology to celebrate Mass. But uh, it was kind of different, you know, people are spread out in the room. Just look at your neighbor, everybody has a mask on. Uh, you know, we always encourage people to sing with their prayer, you know. When you sing, it's like no other way of expressing yourself. I mean, you just can't say, uh, you know, happy birthday to you, happy... No, you have to sing, and when we come together to celebrate the Eucharist, singing is part of how we pray. Well, now we're told that we should really avoid singing. Less chance of germs getting out there all around us. You know, Bishop uh, Bambera, he reminded, you know, he, he said, usually we encourage people, you know, when you receive communion, not to run out the door but just stay for the rest of Mass. And now we're saying, once you receive communion, go out right out the door. So things are kind of turned upside down. And yet, sisters and brothers, as different as things appear, as different as we are praying together, whether you're out there somewhere or whether you're in here, we're doing what people have been doing for 2,000 years. And if you look at our family history. Well, people have certainly offered the Eucharist 
and celebrated the Eucharist in many different ways and in many different circumstances. You know, Mr. Foley, he said he never experienced anything like this, having to come to Mass with a mask and all of our restrictions and safeguards. Certainly is I, I, unique, a unique experience for all of us. But think about it, you know, our, the first Christians, when they celebrated the Eucharist, when they listened to the letters of the apostles, the liturgy of the word, and the good news of Jesus, and then breaking bread and sharing the cup, it's just what we do and have been doing and can do once again in person, listening to the word of God and then sharing in the Eucharist, offering our praise and thanksgiving. We can look through our history. Wow. Uh, uh, trying to think of, you know, like in the era of King Henry VIII, for example, when he didn't get what he wanted. And so his actions helped to splinter the body of Christ throughout the world, the sad separation that we even are aware of, that it's a reality today. Be it those who stayed in the Roman Catholic fold, well, they were fugitives in a way. To celebrate the Eucharist, to do what we're doing now, well, uh, it had to be done in secret. Priests would, you know, the renegade priests, they would travel the countryside and then they would find a safe place where people huddled together in hidden rooms would celebrate Mass. Doing what we're doing, but of course in a different situation, but the heart was the same. Of course, if they were discovered, they might well have been drawn and quartered for living out their faith, for celebrating what we're celebrating now. We weren't always so respectable either. You know, our, our friend Elizabeth Ann Seton, the first American citizen to be native-born American citizen, to be named a saint. When she became a Catholic, drawn to the Catholic Church by the reality of the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, that's what drew her to our family, to our Roman Catholic family. When she became a Catholic, well, her former friends kind of looked down their nose at her because our Catholic family, well, we were considered a religion for the poor, you know, for the outcasts, for immigrants, for aliens. The Catholic Church was for the, the lower classes and how respectable we have become, huh? Although we know that it doesn't matter what class we're in. Doesn't matter how much we make or we don't make. Doesn't matter what's before our name or after our name. We all still come together, united by the Spirit who dwells within us. And it doesn't matter whether we're hiding out somewhere or whether we're in a near empty church. Maybe when we're sit sit seated at home on, on the couch, we celebrate the Eucharist of the Lord, the presence of the Lord in word and in sacrament. We've been through worse times. I mean, for us, it's very unique. But think about some of our ancestors, maybe in those Eastern European countries when the Iron Curtain was a, a reality, when the aim was to abolish religion, to abolish God. And some people, some leaders, some powerful leaders, thought that they could actually wipe out God and Jesus and the sacraments and the church. We are here, and they are gone. But yet our ancestors in our own time, maybe in Poland or Czechoslovakia or Hungary or Estonia, where our religion, our faith was banned and where people hid out and celebrated the Eucharist in private and in secret. And then when that curtain was lifted, we saw that many of our churches were turned into army barracks or warehouses or granaries. And even today, after all the years of being opened up, 
There are still remnants of that era when people sought to stop what we are doing now, what we celebrate, what we thrive on, what we need to live. We had a very interesting history. We certainly are living in a very unique time, nothing like it. For many people, it's been a tragic time. They or their families or friends, they've been touched directly by this monster called COVID-19. For some of us, well, it's been maybe just an inconvenience. We can't get our hair cut. We can't get our nails done. I want to go to the mall. I want to go sit at a bar with my friends. All those important, essential things that we've missed for three months, you know. But put into proper context, brothers and sisters, uh, we've been through far worse. As painful as it is for some people, uh, it hasn't been all that horrible for us if we just have to put on a mask, huh? But through it all, what we're doing now, with all of the minor little changes, wearing a mask, not singing, having to sit in a certain place, it's basically what we've been doing for 2,000 years. Breaking open the Word of God, listening to God's voice through the Scriptures, breaking the bread and sharing the cup, recognizing the presence of the risen Lord in our hearts and in our midst and in our hands as well. And so friends, while you're still at home, and you might be there for a while until you feel a little safer, more secure, uh, we're going to listen to that word of God again. And I think it's a word that we really need to hear so desperately in these times. That great fear that maybe has threatened us, fear of what might happen, fear of what has happened. We look at the world, we look at our own lives, we look at our country, and we might be tempted to give into that fear. Fear of, oh, so many things, so many situations. But hopefully as we gather together once again, elbow, not quite elbow to elbow, but gather together in the same physical space, or whether you're still gonna stay at home for the time being, hopefully the word that is spoken to us the words spoken to the disciples for the first time thousands of years ago, the word that has encouraged and empowered people down through the millennia, it's a word that we will take to heart. Don't be afraid. Fear no one. For remember always that through it all, God is with us. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. That we, God's church, may have the courage and confidence to proclaim the good news of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our fathers, for those who have loved and guided us through life, for those still with us, and for those who have passed over to eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the arrival of summer and our entering the green zone may lift our spirits and enliven hope within, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper respect and reverence for all people, all sisters and brothers in the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in Christ Jesus, especially Joseph Matiska, Monsignor Donald McAndrew, and Leah Venucci, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions carried in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, God and Father of us all, hear and answer our prayers, always according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of hearts pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, and with great joy we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church scattered throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her beloved Joseph, with the apostles, with Saint Nicholas, with blessed Pauline, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We pray together the words of Jesus. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory, glory are yours, now and, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Oh.
mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say, say the Lord, word, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, before we go out into the day, I wish all of you a happy Father's Day. Hope it's good and relaxing. But my mother would always say, every day is Father's Day. Be that as it may, huh? Okay. In case you're wondering, Father Fidel is still stranded in Peru. The last we heard, he has a ticket for July 17th. Uh, keep Father Fidel in your prayers, okay? Uh, a couple people have asked about First Communion and Confirmation. Uh, Mr. Sudano and I are going to meet and uh, find a time when we will able, be able to celebrate First Communion and Confirmation. Now, you may have heard, you know, some parishes, you know, they already had First Communion and Confirmation. Well, I think the one parish that I heard of, they had six kids in their First Communion class. We have Mr. Sudano, 55. Um, it's More a good that. problem to have. We have a lot of uh, young people. So uh, just be patient and we will get to that soon enough during the summer, all right? I think that might be about it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.